Hello and thanks for joining us. Projectile motion in physics. In this tutorial, let's derive the XY formula for the path of a projectile, okay, as it is flying through the air. In this tutorial, we're going to assume that you've seen our presentation on the six basic projectile motion equations in physics. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check that out first beforehand. Let's get into it. Trajectory. That's such a cool word. It's the name given to the path traced out by a projectile. Trajectory. So to derive the xy formula for this shape here, we're going to need a couple of equations. And we're going to use two of our six basic projectile motion equations. We're going to use this equation. And we're going to use this equation. And here they are. Right. So we have our formula for horizontal displacement at any time t and our formula for vertical displacement at any time t. And what we're going to do is try and eliminate t from these two equations. So we just end up with x and y and constants. So to do this I'm going to substitute one into the other one. Okay, So this one's obviously a bit of a nightmare. I'm going to substitute t from this one into this one. So from this one what is t equal to if I want to isolate t? Well, to isolate t, I want to get rid of the v0 times t and the cos theta times t. So I'm going to divide both sides by v0 cos theta. And on this side to v0 cos theta. Okay, so the cos theta is going to cancel and the v0 are going to cancel. Okay, and I might just move that over here, write the result. You can see that t is alone and it's going to be t equals x over v0 cos theta. Okay, so I'm going to substitute this equation into this one, and the t will disappear, leaving us with x and y, and the constants g, v0, and theta. This gets pretty hairy, but let's get into it, give it a try. So y equals v0 times t the first time, and we get x over v0 cos theta, and that's our t, then times sine theta, then minus a half g, and t again, and this time it's going to get squared, x over v0 cos theta, and squared this time. With me so far? Not lost? Good. Hang in there, you're doing well. So this is actually it, but we're just going to make it nicer. Okay, try and simplify it into something a bit more usable and workable. So let's keep working on this. Y equals V0 times this mass times sine theta. So that's kind of like V0 over 1, sine theta over 1. Let's make this one fraction here. So V0 times X times sine theta on top. V0 times X times sine theta on the top. And on the bottom, we've got V0 cos theta. Minus, and over here as well, let's try and make a single fraction. We've got 1 over 2 times this g is like g over 1, and then all this stuff inside the brackets is going to get squared, okay? Our, our index laws or our exponential properties. So on top, we're going to get g x squared, and on the bottom, v naught squared cos squared theta, v naught squared cos squared theta. And I always forget this too, don't forget that too, okay? So by the way, cos theta being squared, if you're going to square any trigonometric function, cos theta squared, what that actually means is we write it like that, just to save uh, time and energy. Okay, so cos theta squared, we write it with the two in there. That just means, So cos squared theta means cos theta, enter, equals on your calculator, then square that value. That's what that means if you haven't seen it before. v naughts cancel out here. And it's getting simpler already. Y equals. Now, sine theta over cosine theta. There's a bit of a result there. Something we can do, a little shorthand. In any situation, sine theta divided by cos of that same angle will always give tan theta. It's a little bit too hard to go into right now. It'll take too much time to explain that. Right, but we're going to use that right here. So throwing that in here, it's just going to become x times, and all this becomes tan theta. x tan theta. And I might just copy this down here. g 
x squared over 2v naught squared. And I might just split off that cos squared theta into 1 over cos squared theta. So what I'm going to do next, let's have one more thing here. 1 over cosine theta, 1 over cos theta. Uh, there's another expression for that too. These are called the reciprocal ratios. 1 over sine theta equals cosec theta. 1 over tan is cot theta. And 1 over cos is sec theta. Okay, a simpler way of writing it. Which means we can write this as y equals x tan theta minus gx squared over 2v naught squared times, okay, and if you've got 1 over cos theta all squared, this will be sec theta all squared times sec squared theta. A little bit more to go, getting closer. Sec squared theta. There are these things called the trigonometric identities or the Pythagorean identities. And one of them is tan squared theta for some angle theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. Okay, so we can actually replace sec squared theta with tan squared theta plus 1. Why would we do that? Isn't this harder or more complicated? Now it looks that way. But if we use this, then we've got tan everywhere. Okay, it's always nice to sort of be consistent. So if we've got tan, 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 that sort of looks nicer. Okay, so let's substitute this for sec squared theta and put it here. Let's bring it up here. And here we go. So y equals x tan theta, x times tan theta minus gx squared over 2v naught squared times, and let's use brackets here, tan squared theta plus 1. And that is actually it. Okay, uh, that is the xy formula for this shape here. So you can see there we've got y and x only with no t. Everything else is constant. v naught is constant, theta is constant, and g is constant. And just a couple of things, if you're ever doing like a mathematical project or something like that and you want to enter this as a formula onto like an online applet or a simulation, maybe it's a ball being fired or a cannon, will it make it over a certain wall? And let's say you're given a wall here and you know where the wall is, you know how far and how high it is. Maybe this point here is like x1, y1. You can substitute x1 and y1 in, x1 here and x1 here and y1 there. And then you can use theta as your variable, or you can use v0 as your variable. Some of these online things you can play with have sliders, okay? And it will move the shape so that it still goes through this point, and you can look at um, the different values for v0 and theta. Kind of fun. And that's another reason why we change the sec squared theta into tan squared theta plus 1. If you have a problem involving a wall or something, and you want to solve for theta, then when you put in the values of x1 and y1, you will get a quadratic equation in tan theta. That makes it much easier to solve. Probably the most interesting thing of all about this is, this tells us what kind of a shape this actually is. Okay, so assuming there's no air resistance and it's perfectly symmetrical, let me rewrite this just one more way here. I'm gonna write y equals, and I'm gonna put this first, negative g over 2v naught squared, and then I'm gonna put this tan thingy, tan squared theta plus 1. You're probably thinking, oh, I forgot the x squared. No, I didn't. I'm going to put it in here now, x squared at the end, for a very good reason. I'm going to explain it in a second. Then let's put this at the end, plus x tan theta, plus x tan theta. Okay, so why am I doing this? Well, this actually tells us the shape of this. It's actually a parabola. What's the general form of a parabola? The general form of a parabola is this, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? Okay, y equals something x squared plus something x plus something. And that is actually what we have here. y equals, the first something is the a value. Okay, this is actually the a value. That's our a. x squared plus, oh, this might look better the other way around, actually. Let me flip that to tan theta times x. Okay, and when you write it like that, the tan theta, you can see, is our b value. Okay, so y equals ax squared plus bx. 
Nothing over here which means plus zero, and that is actually our C value. And if you remember from parabolas, the C value is always the y-intercept. And you can see here the projectile is going through zero, zero. Okay, so this is actually C equals zero is our y-intercept in this case. So this formula, because this is all constant, feet is constant, v naught is constant, g is constant, this is our a value, and it's negative, which means it opens down, it's concave down. We have a negative a value here, which you can see. So that shows that a projectile moves in the path of a parabola. That is when there's no air resistance. It's perfectly symmetrical, okay, and it takes off and lands at the same height. And as a last, last thing, what if the projectile was not fired at ground level? Maybe it was fired from level H, call it H there, right, that will be a, high, a certain height H. So this will be the point is 0 H, and it was fired like this, with the same V0 and the same theta. How would that make the formulas different? Well, this would change here. We'd end up with a plus H at the very end. Okay, if you went back to our six basic formulas, this formula would be different in the beginning. That would actually have the plus h there, which would copy down to here, and that would subsequently make this plus h out there, and that would be our y-intercept h. Okay, instead of c equals 0, we would have c equals h. So that was quite a doozy. I hope you're able to follow along and that you got something out of that. Please leave a comment. What did you think? And I'll see you next time.